So we're going to start off by looking at arranging different numbers of squares in different patterns and seeing how many possibilities we can come up with. So if we first of all have a look at when we have two squares. So if I draw two squares using the squares on my squared paper here, okay, that's one way of arranging the two squares. Now there's some rules that we need to think about when we're thinking about all the different possibilities we can come up with. The first rule is we're draw only drawing 2D shapes, so we're just drawing flat 2D shapes. The second rule is that none of the shapes can be the same. So even if you turn them round, rotate them, flip them over, they've all got to be different. So if, for example, I drew another square like this, that's another way of arranging two squares, but you'll see that if I rotated this one round and flipped it on its other side, it would fit on top of this one. So it's not a different possibility. So this one doesn't work. You might also think, I know, I can draw my squares like this. Now they're only touching at a corner or a vertice there. So the other rule is that they need to be touching along an edge like they are here in this first example. One of the whole edges is touching. Something like this doesn't count, so we can put a cross through that. So looking at two squares, there's no other possibilities of arranging those two squares. So we've only got one possibility here. Now we're going to have a look at three squares. Now I'm going to start by drawing three squares in a row. Okay, it's always quite a good idea to be methodical and start with a long line and then work from that, from that point. So another way that I could draw three squares is by arranging them like that. So that is very different to this shape. No matter how much I rotate that, flip that round, it's not going to be the same as that. So that's two different possibilities I've got there. Now I might think, oh, I know, I can draw it like that. But again, you'll see that if I flip that one over, it will fit on top of this one here. So this one doesn't count as a possibility. So even when we've got three squares, there's actually only two possibilities. Let's have a look at four squares. Again, I'm going to start with my row of four squares. That's one possibility. You can probably already see some other possibilities that I've got there. Okay, so my next one I'm going to draw, I'm just going to put three in a row and then put another one down there. Again, a different way of drawing it would be to put this square at the end here. But, but that would be, if I flipped it over, it would be the same as that, so I can't use that possibility. However, I could draw three squares like that and then put that odd one at the bottom. Again, these are all totally different possibilities. Another way that I've got is to draw, if I move that up a little bit, I've got four, the four squares arranged in a larger square itself. And then there's one more that I can do here. I'll draw that up here. I don't know if any of you might have spotted this already. So for four squares, I've got one, two, three, four, five possibilities. Now when we've got two squares arranged like that, we call that a domino. You've probably heard that term before, or maybe played the game dominoes. When we've got three squares arranged, these are called trominoes. And when we've got four squares arranged, they are called tetrominoes. Now, your task is going to be able to find all the pentominoes, which are when you've got five squares. So this is your first activity. Your job is to find all the pentominoes by arranging five squares into different shapes. And I can tell you that there are 12 to find. So there's 12 different possibilities. So as the squares, number of squares increased, the number of possibilities increases as well. The rules are on this slide. 
So remember you're only making flat 2D shapes. The squares must join each other along the full length of an edge, not at the corners or the vertices like I showed you with the two squares at the beginning. And all the shapes must be different from each other. If you can turn your shape over or rotate it um, round to fit on top of another shape, then it's not different and it doesn't count. Now to draw your pentominoes, if you've got your maths book at home, you'll have squares in your maths book. So you can use the squares in your maths, box, maths book to start drawing these. If you haven't got any squared paper, but you have got a printer at home, then you'll find on Go for Schools that I've um, attached a squared paper page. So you can always print that page and start drawing some squares. And if you haven't got a printer at home and haven't got any squared paper, then you're just gonna have to sketch them. Okay, but try and use a ruler so that you can draw the squares fairly accurately. So maybe a centimetre by a centimetre for your square measurement. So it'd be a really good idea now for you to pause the video, go and find some squared paper if you've got some, or print the squared paper page that I've provided, um, or find some blank paper for you to start drawing your um, squares on. So you're finding all the pentominoes that you can by arranging five squares into different shapes. So pause the video now and have a go. When you think you're done, come back to the video and I will let you know what the next activity is going to be. Good luck. Okay, so welcome back. I'm hoping that by now you have found, if not all of them, most of the pentominoes. Um, and what you could do now is you could cut them out um, and so you've got them all um, separate and, and cut out. Now you'll need them cut out because for your next activity, you're need to, going to need to be able to arrange those in a specific order. So you'll see under the visualizer here, I've got a three by five rectangle. Now my job now, and your job in a moment, is going to be to try and find three of your pentominoes that will fit into that rectangle. And there's gonna be lots of different solutions, okay? I'm gonna show you one now, but I think you should be able to find some other ones. So I'm gonna take my pentominoes that I've cut out, and I've colored mine in as well. And I'm gonna put one on there. This one on there like that. And then I've got another one here. Okay, and they fit in to that um, rectangle there. Now on the slides that follow in the PowerPoint, there's different size rectangles for you to try and fit more and more pentominoes in. The extension for this task is a giant rectangle, which is 10 by six, which you should be able to fit all the pentominoes into. Now this is another size rectangle. This is a four by five rectangle, and I'm gonna try and fit these pentominoes into this rectangle. So if I pop these in where I think they're going to, going to fit, now this can be flipped over. So if you have coloured yours in and you've cut them out and you think, oh, but that doesn't fit like that, you can flip them over. That's absolutely fine to do because it's still the same pentomino, but it's just flipped over. So this is the second activity I would like you to do. Once you've found all 12 pentominoes, and if you haven't yet found them all, do not worry. Go to the very last slide on the PowerPoint and you will find the 12 pentominoes there. So you can either print them out from that slide if you haven't found them all, or you could copy them out into your books for the ones that you haven't found. Now, on the next few slides, there are various size rectangles. I've shown you the three by five and the four by five. Um, and there's a couple of other size rectangles as well. So choose one of the rectangles um, and draw it out. Make sure it's to the same scale as your pentominoes. And um, by that, I mean that if your um, pentominoes are one centimeter by one centimeter, then you need to make sure that your rectangles are three centimeters by five centimeters. If you've used two squares in your book, maybe, so your pentominoes are two centimeters for each square, then you'll need to double that for your rectangle. So you can make sure the pentominoes fit into the rectangle. So have, a, have an explore, cut them out and decide which pentominoes you can arrange in the different size rectangles. You might just wanna try one rectangle or you might want to try a couple of the rectangles. 
How many different solutions can you find for each rectangle? And the extension task for this one is, can you arrange all your pentominoes in the largest rectangle, which is 10 by six? So here are some examples of the rectangles. Again, you can print them from here or you can just draw them out into your book. This is the largest pentomino grid. So this is 10 by six, so it uses all the pentominoes. And this is the extension task if you want to have a challenge. So your third activity, and this is the final activity that you have to do. There are some extensions coming up in a moment. So the third activity is to look at each of your pentominoes as a net. And a net is a 2D pattern, so that's all your um, pentominoes there, that when folded up create a 3D figure. And I want you to decide which pentominoes, pentominoes will fold up to form an open-topped box. So there's some examples on the slide there of open-topped boxes. And once you've, because you've got all your pentominoes cut out, fold them up, only eight of them will fold up to form this open top box. So I wonder if you can find all eight. I'm gonna show you an example of how to do this under the visualizer. So here's one of our pentominoes that hopefully you've found. And if I take this pentomino and I just fold it, if you imagine I had little tabs on the, on the edges here to glue that together, you can see that that forms an open top box. So it's the five sides um, of a cube, but I haven't got a top there. And then obviously I can flatten that out. So that's a net for that open top box. So that's one of the possibilities. There's eight altogether. Can you find the other seven? Okay, so these um, are the extension tasks that you can have a go at if you want to. Extension one is all about area. So you're gonna use all of your 12 pentominoes and I would like you to arrange them so that all of them are touching at least one edge to enclose the largest area possible. So I've started an example there on the slide. And if you do try and do this on squared paper, so in your maths books, if you've got those at home and see if you can count the squares in the enclosed area that you make with all 12 pentominoes and find the largest area possible that you can create. So you can probably see already with um, how I've arranged these, that if I change this orange pentomino and flipped it over so this bit was at the bottom, there would be even more in um, space inside the enclosed area. So I should really have flipped this one over to give maximum space inside the enclosed area. So have a go at that one and let me know what your largest area you can create is. Extension two is thinking about perimeter and perimeter is the total distance around the outside of a 2D shape. So you're gonna pick two pentominoes and arrange them along one edge. So they can't touch at the vertices, at the corners, they need to be touching along at least one edge. What's the largest perimeter you can make using only two pentominoes? and which two pentominoes create the largest perimeter. So once you've arranged two together here, and I just picked two at random, okay, pick a point on your um, pentomino, and I've marked it with a blue cross here, and then count the squares as you go round back to that cross, okay? So I'm gonna count from round, so if I count all the way round, how many edges I am going along all the way round the shape and back to the blue cross, and there's 18 edges that I pass along to get all the way back. So the perimeter of these two pentominoes together is 18. I think you can probably find a larger perimeter. That's your challenge, off you go. Extension three is looking at tessellation. Now a shape can be tessellated if it can be arranged repeatedly with no gaps and no overlaps. Below on this slide, you can see two examples of two different pentominoes that can be tessellated without turning them round or flipping them over. So you see we've got the L-shaped um, pentomino here. And if we keep drawing this repeatedly down like this and repeatedly down here, you can see that we don't need to flip that shape over or turn it round to tessellate it. And the same with this shape over here. 
There's another five pentominoes that can be tessellated in this way without flipping them over or rotating them round. Your challenge is to find those, um, the, the other five. And the rest of the pentominoes can only be tessellated by turning them round or flipping them over. So you could have a try at tessellating the ones that are left over as well if you'd like to. Now the final extension, uh, and this is if you really want to challenge yourself and you've got plenty of time, is to find the hexominoes. Now this is using six squares and there are 35 hexominoes to find. Now I'm not going to show it on this video, just in case you're watching the video the whole way through before you start the practical activities. But the next slide, which is loaded onto Go for Schools after this last extension for here, is a slide showing all the pentominoes. So if you're really struggling to find those pentominoes or there's just one missing that you can't find, then have a look at the next slide on Go for Schools and you will be able to find all the pentomino possibilities there. Good luck and enjoy the task. <laughs>